yes so the next uh, component after the counterweights is your elevator machine so this machine turns the sheave or the pulley and lifts or lowers the car the machine consists of a heavy structural frame on which all these components or auxiliaries are mounted it could either be you know probably an ismb or ismc you would have seen this uh, structural members which are used for for the framing purpose right yeah so next one is the hoist way so the shaft way or the hoist way is the vertical passage way for the car and the counterweights on this on the side walls of the hoist way they you get to see guide rails and other controlling apparatus okay at the bottom of the shaft uh, you have the car and the counterweight buffers so these buffers are something component that are located in the lift pit of the hoist way okay so what happens is when the car moves up and down when the car when the lift car happens to rest on the lowermost possible or allowable floor we need to have some ground buffers to it so that in case of any sort of an emergency or during its normal functioning the car comes and rests on the buffer without any problem okay so this is what shall mean the hoist way so next we have uh, applications uh, of the traction elevators so they are very helpful in you know mid to a high rise building uh, because the speed is highly uh, greater than the hydraulic type of elevators so and these are very smoother in ride because of the counterweight traction and uh, the system is more energy efficient as the counterweight is uh, balancing the car load whereas in a hydraulic system uh, the uh, the car had to get pushed against the gravity right yes so and also in this type of elevators they offer a good uh, ride or relaxed ride to the passengers which will also enhance the quality of the passenger ride okay so these are the main uh, applications is what we can say so these are some of the types of traction elevators that you are seeing in the slide so we have geared traction elevator we have gearless traction elevator then we have machine room less traction elevator and we have fright traction elevator all right so this is just a glimpse to give a pictorial understanding of all the four typologies okay we will understand this one by one in detail so the very first one is the geared traction elevator here the electric motor in this design drives the total system which turns the hoisting sheave meaning you have an electric motor placed which will drive this pulley or the sheave that you see in this machine room okay so the driving motor can therefore be smaller uh, it could also be less expensive and high speed uh, unit rather than a gearless installation so typically these are uh, you know uh, operated at speeds of 40 meters or 150 meters per minute so it's a very good uh, speed for any uh, medium rise or a high rise building okay so the advantages is uh, uh, you can have machine room either you can put it in the basement or in the overhead so it is less expensive installation wise compared to gearless type and this is faster when it comes to speed than hydraulic system and definitely it is a, it has a smoother ride and relaxed ride compared to the hydraulic system okay so this can be suited for low rise mid rise or high rise buildings uh, any newer constructions you can place them or any sort of additional modifications you need to do a building uh, example you have already few storied heights and you want to expand the number of stories later you can definitely bring in this uh, lift into consideration okay 
So next we have gearless type of traction elevator. Uh, it shall mean that the absence of gears is uh, nothing but you know the motor runs at a low speed is what it means okay so these are generally utilized for passenger service with low car capacities meaning uh, when you have less number of passengers uh, using that particular lift then you can definitely go for this typology this is considered to be more efficient and quieter in operation and requires less maintenance and also has a longer life because this is a non-geared or a gearless traction system okay yeah so you can see here you don't have any motor you know that is controlling this uh, uh, particular system so you can definitely you know go with uh, this typology also so next advantages is uh, say very similar to the gear, gear, tra gear traction and other major advantages would be extremely low noise levels and uh, it is also energy efficient compared to the gear traction okay so suited for uh, uh, low rise mid rise and high rise and uh, the speed will be around 200 to 800 feet per minute so next we have machine room less traction elevator so in this machine roomless uh, system the machines are located within the hoistway we don't have a separate room either on top of the hoistway or at the bottom of the hoistway so it is placed within the hoistway you can see here the entire system is placed within the hoistway so that we could eliminate the machine room so that space wise construction wise it is definitely an advantage uh, then the motors are placed also inside the shaft to make the space look quite uh, compact and productive okay so this will also save the time time and cost for the use of lift okay yeah so the advantages is el it eliminates the conventional machine room uh, and also reduces the power consumption it is greater in speed compared to the hydraulic system and uh, it is expensive than it is less expensive than gear traction system okay so this could be used for you know low rise or a mid rise building yeah and the speed shall be around 500 feet per minute so the last uh, uh, typology is fright traction elevator so you can see this uh, that entire system is within this particular shaft and also you have a driving sheave up on the top okay so the major advantages is this is again speeder than the hydraulic system and uh, unlimited for floor travel is also possible and so best suited for low and mid rise sort of a building so i think in every other picture you could you would have also noticed this component over here this is what we call it as a buffer this blue color thing yes so you have a buffer to the lift car and you also have a buffer to your counterweight so when this uh, when the car goes up your counterweight comes down so in order to not hit the ground we have this buffer here okay similarly vice versa when the counterweight goes up your lift car comes down and the lift car comes and rests on these buffers is what it means all right yeah so the next uh, classification under the hoistway we have climbing elevators so it is a self ascending elevator uh, with its own propulsion so you can see in this pictures the way the climbing elevators work so this propulsion the to and fro movement can be done by electric uh, or a combust combustible engine okay so these are generally seen in the construction sites a very large industrial setups and other work zones okay yeah hope it's clear so the fourth uh, classification is uh, the pneumatic elevators i think you are very much aware of the word pneumatic yes 
exactly it is something to do with air correct so let's understand what these pneumatic elevators are so these move their passenger cars up and down by controlling the air pressure within the elevator chamber or the lift shaft so this vacuum pumps the vacuum is pumped in the flow of air into the chamber in order to transport the passenger from their respective floors right so this type of application could be found in residential homes where a pit and hoist way could not be feasible uh, because if the house is built and later you cannot do a major alteration by adding a lift shaft inside the house that will lead to a lot of problems later so you can just get this pneumatic elevators and install them so these are also quite advantageous so because you know they are unique in their design they have panoramic 360 degree views because it is a uh, uh, you you can have glass all around the lift car and uh, their self supporting structure meaning uh, in in you can install it wherever you want to whether it's a new house or an existing house uh, wherever you want you can definitely put it inside the space so they don't need to get supported via other supporting system they stand on their own and you don't have a pet so you don't need to excavate so and there's no machine room also needed okay and you don't need a separate masonry hoist way and all for this typology so installation can be done directly on the finished floor okay so it's absolutely safe in case of power failure also if in case a person is inside the lift car it will automatically descend down slowly to the lower most level so this is how pneumatic elevators are designed for okay yeah so this is a picture where you can see you know this is a person inside the lift car and this is the atmospheric pressure that is created uh, this are, we would rather call it as a pressure zone all, all right and this is the cabin and uh, you can see here this is the low pressure area so when there is a low pressure definitely you know the dynamics of pressure the car is moving up okay this is what the entire pneumatic system of lift is controlled and uh, because it cannot happen automatically we end up having a motor or a vacuum pump box somewhere at the terrace area of the house or if you have any smaller mezzanines you can have uh, a small box that is kept as a vacuum pump box all right and you need few pipes connecting uh, the vacuum pump box and to the lift shaft so that the air pressure can be modulated or controlled through these pipes all right isn't it very very simple exactly yeah so you can see this this is a better picture even more you can understand see how it looks it has its own self supporting structure you have glass all around so you can turn around 360 degrees and have a good view and it is easy quick and uh, clean in installation so due to its self supporting structure the elevator is capable of freestanding uh, at any ground level so you can have two to five stops for a residence marine or any other uh, multi-stage applications okay and it is also said to be eco-friendly for the fact that you know uh, this elevator is powered by one of the most abundant resources uh, in the world that we use as air okay so it is also termed as eco-friendly in nature and it's absolutely safe because in case of any sort of a power failure the car slowly descends down to the lowermost floor and the passenger can come out of the lift car so there is no chances of lift car collapsing down also okay because of the air that is 
present inside the left shaft okay Uh, you can see this this is one of the companies uh, uh, profile that have picked in so you can have a single passenger capacity pneumatic elevator you can have twin passenger capacity pneumatic elevator you can also have a multi passenger where it will also help for specially able people to use the lift shaft okay yeah So the next classification what we have is the according to building type or you can also call it as nature of use. So we did list couple of them previously in that we also had goods lift. So this is again a picture that shows in any industrial setup or manufacturing units you will have this big sized uh, goods lift which will transport goods from one floor to another for various purposes so this second image over here is taken from nbc the national building code so again this is very similar we have a lift card and the machine room on top and this is the section sectional elevation all right and again you have alphabets here a b c and d so accordingly there be there are specific dimensions that has been proposed in nbc where you can use them okay we will see to that yeah so based on the capacity or the loading of the particular lift so you have those dimensions designed here so you have the lift car sizing and also the lift well sizing that is given to you and also the entrance opening size okay so if you have to just to quickly understand example you need to use a 500 kg uh, load lift to be designed in some industry okay so the lift car uh, would be around 1100 by 1200 and then the lift well size should be or the lift shaft size should be 1900 by 1500 accordingly okay so this is something one has to be very very clear so we cannot also violate nbc norms so these are designed based on the set uh, you know industrial set rules wherein uh, also the vendors or the manufacturing companies of various lifts do follow this particular sizing okay shall we proceed yes so the what would be what do you think would be the advantages of lift primarily it is very much functionally required to transport goods from one point to another so you need not you know manually lift them from floor to floor definitely this is an advantage so and also you can have you can either go for a, a hydraulic system or a traction system when it comes to goods lift and you need to you may uh, require very minimal pit and overhead requirements and it is very low in, in its uh, initial and maintenance cost compared to a traction system okay so you can use this in low and mid-rise buildings and also the capacity uh, is given and the speed is up to 200 feet per minute as will be the speed so it is definitely helpful up to the mid-rise buildings Next we have dumb waiters. I think this is very much, uh, you know, you all would have heard the word dumb waiter from your previous semesters, correct? So these are very small freight elevators uh, which are used in order to carry some sort of sensitive instruments or, you know, some smaller objects from floor to floor uh, in various uh, building typologies so they can be limited uh, you can have a very small lift cabin so you can here the passenger cannot enter this is purely for the goods to transport from floor to floor okay so you would have definitely seen them probably in case if you would have been to a, a multi-star uh, hotel so there you would have seen a dumbwaiter in the corridor transporting the goods from floor to floor 
and otherwise in case if you would have visited certain museums the museums also have dumb waiters where they carry objects from the display area to the maintenance area whenever required okay so something like this so it has its own applications so again we have nbc bound set regulations where we have the uh, sizing also mentioned here the lift car size and the lift well size for the dumb waiter that is also purely dependent on the loading here so it is very evident you can see the numbers right away here okay yes uh, this is again uh, when we are talking about the dumb waiters we have two uh, types in the industry what we see one is the floor landing another one is the counter landing so it is very simple floor landing is when we have to transport any goods from the floor level directly to the car then the then this type of system is called as floor loading and in case if you are lifting and transferring the goods into the lift cart it is called as a counter loading so generally you will have a small counter here and then the good is pushed from the countertop to inside the car so this is how uh, it works all right so the image is very very self explanatory in understanding these two types so applications uh, in a large scale departmental stores if you need to transport goods uh, from the storeroom to the selling counters you can do that in hospitals you can use it to transport food to various floors medicines and other linen items from floor to floor and even you could use uh, uh, certain in certain uh, sensitive areas in the hospital where you need to transport certain uh, sensitive instruments from the store to the respective operational theaters or testing centers okay so in restaurants you, uh, you can use it for the food delivery from the kitchen uh, to the serving lobbies when it is a multi-level sort of a situation in museums definitely you can use it to transport artifacts because it needs a careful handling so you cannot take it via staircase and trip and fall so you can use such uh, elevators to transport the artifacts and in large scale industries and uh, things you can they are used to ship or transport large scale equipments and other goods from floor to floor all right yes so next uh, we have accord next classification is according to special use okay so un under this we have something called as double decker elevator or a double deck elevator system you can definitely see in this uh, picture over here you can see two lift cars attached to one another okay so that is why we call it as a double decker you are very much aware of the name double decker right you would have seen double decker trains double decker buses yes this is pretty similar double decker elevator okay so the major advantages would be like you know these eliminate the extended elevator waiting period uh, because in a high rise building people will be in a mad rush to go from odd floors to e odd floors at a higher level or even floors of lower level to even floors of higher level so people can go to their respective even and odd floor lobbies and they can just pick up their lift cars and go to their respective floors okay yeah so as said this within the same hoist way you have two lift cars attached to each other okay so the capability of this type is to serve two different floors at the same time so which minimizes the waiting period and the riding time uh, at different levels so this will increase the transport capacity within the building compared to a conventional single car in a single shaft okay yeah so this image will give you a better more clarity uh, imagine you have one lift car in one lift shaft and you have three such lift shafts attached to each other 
so this is the kind of space that it takes so you have three lift shafts but you have three lift cars correct but when you think about this you have two lift shafts and you have four lift cars and this one lift shaft is left so this adds on to your interior functional spaces and you have additional lift car coming into place within the smaller lift area compared to the other conventional type so in this way this is such a huge uh, game changer and a, a space saver okay so this can definitely be used for any sort of high rise buildings okay and because it will be and even in a large scale multinational skyscrapers you can definitely use public keep moving left right center from floor to floor so once you know from which floor you need to access which floor you can just go to the respective ward and even lobbies and access these cars and go to your floors as soon as possible okay yeah so next we have capsule elevator so uh, i hope uh, you all know the meaning of a capsule it is a small elevator uh this is definitely for passenger only so what happens here is you have a small capsule uh, uh, shaped glass lifts meaning these are special lifts installed on the exterior surface of the building or you can see this lifts from the uh, um atrium spaces uh and something like that okay so which will enhance the look so when you stand in at an atrium of four to five floors open to sky you will see um this capsule elevators you know going up and down from floor to floor so this is something sort of a interesting feature within the atrium area so it will be like visually also creating some sense of uh, pleasure within the atrium space okay so capsule lifts have a very large transparent glass providing uh, panoramic view of the surrounding so they can also accommodate uh, from a minimum of 4 to 8 passengers up to 40 passengers for a single capsule that's the capacity of a capsule elevator okay so they you can get it in multiple shapes it could be circular on plan it could be segmental on plan it could be polygonal in shape so you can design the capsule profile the way you want clear okay so coming to the next one we have evacuation elevator okay so the word itself says evacuation so we know when the evacuation happens which means during emergencies right so in case of any sort of trouble or uh, emergency situation in a building a person can definitely use this evacuation elevator so they are distinguished from regular elevators by modifications that are designed to allow the lift to be safely and effectively used during the evacuation time in case of any fire or any hazards so something like that you can use them okay so uh, lifts that can be used as evacuation lifts are not usually reserved solely for using in emergencies you can also use this for ordinary purposes also passenger lifts uh, meaning out of uh, emergency scenarios is what it tells okay yeah but this elevator is something we call it as a fireman's elevator but this elevator you cannot use it like a regular passenger elevator on day to day basis so here this type of elevator enables the firefighters meaning the fire rescuing team during emergency fire emergency uh, those people use this type of elevator which is designed in a high rise building in order to rescue people who are trapped at upper floors 
okay so all necessary services for this particular uh, elevator should be given separately and cannot be shared with any other services of a building so you will have electric power supply because you the machine has to operate so like that you have various building services allocated for this particular uh, elevator shaft so all this should be separately given and you cannot combine with any other uh, services is what it says okay okay so next we have uh, something called as elevator for specially abled okay so here uh, this is purely designed for specially abled keeping them in mind so these are designed uh, for specially abled people to ascend or descend uh, from one floor to another uh, without having any sort of obstructions to them because they because they cannot move by themselves and they are dependent on other fixture we have to be very very careful and sensitive so that they have a obstruction free movement and obstruction free access to this type of elevator okay so the these lift provides comfort uh, by its one mechanism attached to the corner of the stairs where specially able people can go up or down so here uh, in this uh, line diagram uh, photographs what you see you have a small chair which is attached to the guide rail or the railing of the staircase so you sit on to this chair and this chair will take you to the upper level wherever you want to go so this is one type so here the chair or the car this itself you can call it as a car so this car glides along this rail and you can reach up this is one type otherwise if you have sufficient space landing space you can incorporate a lift car itself with the help of guide rails on all the four sides so the person can open the door and he can get inside and you know press button to close the door and then uh, you can go to your respective floor and again open the shutter to come out and access uh, any upper or lower floors okay yes this is what uh, elevators for specially able shall mean so uh, by now we have covered and understood various classifications of elevators that are used in the industry all right so i hope it is clear so in our coming uh, video let's understand certain design considerations for elevators so because you know you need to understand uh, not just the sizing of the lift Uh, shaft or the lift car how do you arrive at the passenger capacity and what are the time intervals how do you design the lift to its fullest potential for its effective functional use is something that we will understand in the coming video all right okay see you guys in the next video thank you